In this video we'll take a look at a piece of vintage amateur radio test equipment, the Heathkit HM102 RF power meter. An SWR bridge or meter measures standing wave ratio, a measure of how well a transmitter is matched to a transmission line and antenna. An ideal transmission line would have a match of one to one, indicating that all the power is reaching the destination and not reflected. It's a commonly used piece of test equipment by radio amateurs. An RF power meter measures the radio frequency output power in watts of a radio transmitter. Units often offer different power ranges in order to make more accurate measurements and work over a specific range of frequencies such as the HF or VHF amateur radio bands. As they use similar circuitry, SWR and power meters are sometimes combined into the same instrument. Heathkit offered a number of SWR and power meters over the years. All were sold as kits that the user would assemble. The first was the AM2 SWR meter in 1957. It was replaced by the HM11 in 1962. I have an HM11 here and have covered it in another YouTube video. This was replaced by the HM15 in 1966 until the release of the HM102, the unit described in this video. It was offered from 1970 to 1981, typically at a price of US $34.95. The HM102 was replaced by the HM2140 in 1978, and then the HM2140A, which was offered until Heathkit exited the kit business in 1991. Related products included the HM9 QRP watt meter and HM2102 dummy load and watt meter. The HM102 was the top selling SWR meter that Heathkit ever made. Previous models did not measure power, only SWR. From 1973 to 1981, Heathkit also offered the HM2102, which looked almost identical to this unit, but was for VHF from 50 to 160 megahertz and had maximum power ranges of 25 and 250 watts. The HM102 can measure SWR from 1.8 to 30 MHz. This covers the 160 through 10 meter ham bands. It can handle up to 2,000 watts continuously and measure SWR of signals as low as 10 watts. It can also measure RF output power over two ranges, 0 to 200 and 0 to 2,000 watts, with an accuracy of plus or minus 10 percent at full scale. Note that this means, for example, accuracy of plus or minus 20 watts on the 200 watt scale and plus or minus 200 watts on the 2000 watt scale, so accuracy can be poor at the low end of the meter scale. It has low insertion loss, so it can be left permanently installed in the transmission line. It should be used with 50 ohm impedance transmission lines. No external power source is needed, and it weighs about 2.5 pounds. The sensor can be used inside the unit, or it can be removed and placed remotely from the meter and control unit. It comes with a six-foot cable, but can use longer cables, although they may need to be shielded. You can mount the remote unit using mounting holes, but it's not weatherproof. The HM102 matches the HW and SB series Heathkit equipment of the era. The unit is inside a case with meter and controls mounted on the front. The sensor unit is inside an aluminum box which can be mounted inside the case or remotely up to six feet away using the supplied cables. Circuitry is on one printed circuit board with some parts on the front panel. It uses a toroidal inductor to pick off the RF signal. Input and output use standard SO239 UHF connectors. Calibration involves adjusting balance trimmer cap C4 for a minimum or zero reading when transmitting into a 50 ohm dummy load. You're told to then cover the hole with a supplied square insulator paper and double-sided tape. I see some evidence that this unit had such a paper at one time as there are some marks on the case. You then calibrate the power reading. If you can transmit on the 40 meter band, calibration just consists of adjusting the cal resistor so that the reading matches the same value as when the switch is in the cal position with about 100 watts of RF power applied. If you can't transmit on 40 meters, you can measure the actual power using an RF voltmeter or RF probe and then adjust the cal trimmer so the reading matches the calculated applied power. To use the unit, connect it between the transmitter and transmission line. 
Note that you should always install an SWR meter after the transmitter and before any antenna tuner, and not between the antenna tuner and antenna. Otherwise, you'll not be measuring the match between the transmitter and antenna system. In normal operation, make sure that the switch on the sensor unit is set to normal and not calibrate. To measure power, set the unit to the appropriate range, 200 or 2000 watts, and directly read the RF power output on the meter while transmitting. It measures average power, so you want to use CW mode. It will not measure PEP or peak power for single sideband signals, although you can transmit a tone on single sideband and measure the average power. Here you can see my transmitter putting out at a power of 10 watts on the 200 watt range. And now the transmitter is putting out its full power rating of 100 watts. To measure SWR, set the function to SWR, pull out the SWR sensitivity switch, Transmit a signal and adjust the sensitivity knob for a full scale reading. Then push in the knob and read the SWR. Here I'm getting an SWR of close to 1 to 1 into a dummy load. Into my actual antenna, a shortened 40 meter dipole with an antenna tuner, I'm getting an SWR of about 1.1 to 1. Without the antenna tuner, the SWR rises to a little over 2 to 1. You can measure lower power values by transmitting at 10 watts, going to SWR mode, and adjusting the sensitivity knob for a reading of 100 on the 200 watt scale. Now the meter will indicate power over a 0 to 20 watt range. This unit was purchased on eBay in May 2016 from a seller in British Columbia, Canada. It was in good shape but a little dirty and had no manual. It came with these two UHF jumper cables. I found a complete copy of the manual on the internet. I gave it a basic inspection and cleaned it. The case cleaned up quite well. I performed the calibration procedure using the internal calibration method and a 40 meter band signal. The power readings are pretty much bang on as compared to the programmed power settings on my Yaesu FT450D transmitter from 10 to 100 watts. Good quality, i.e. accurate SWR watt meters tend to be expensive. Low-cost units tend not to be very accurate. The HM102 struck a good balance between good accuracy, 10%, and low cost. Other notable features included low insertion loss, the remote sensing unit, no need for a power source, and a large meter, all of which made this a very popular unit. It can't really be used below 10 watts, so it's not suitable for QRP transmitters, and you can't accurately read SWR over about 3. The main limitation was the lack of peak power measurement. There have been various modifications published to add the ability to measure PEP power, most notably an article called PEP Watt Meter a la Heath in the December 1976 issue of QST magazine. I may just build the circuit as it's quite simple, but it does require drilling a couple of holes in the case for switches and adding a power source. Another possible modification would be a dial light, which would obviously also require a power source. All in all, I'm quite happy with my HM102 and plan to permanently connect it to my transmission line. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit amateur radio and test equipment.